Awesome. So yeah, so my name is Susan Ibach, and I actually work for Amazon as part of their Amazon in, in the community team, which uh, I am a senior program manager there. And we are a team that focuses on a lot of philanthropic work for Amazon. And I'm here today to talk about the uh, program we ended up developing called Career Tours, which really is sort of online, on-demand, interactive virtual field trips. These are behind the scenes tours that allow students to explore technology used in the real world. So connecting what they're learning to what happens in the real world and in an industry. Um, and to discover different careers as well, because we know there's a lot of careers students simply aren't aware of. They have a very narrow opportunity to discover broad and, and an array of careers. And this one's hosted on Kahoot. Uh, Kahoot is a game-based learning platform that allows students to watch videos uh, and you can interact with it. It's one that a lot of teachers already know and students create quizzes with it. So this is a platform teachers in North America are very familiar with. And it's a very interactive, popular platform with teachers. Um, but if they say a picture is worth a thousand words, I think a video is sometimes worth 10,000. So I'm just gonna take a second here and play this little video so you can get a sense of what the tour experience is. It's quite short, about 20 seconds. I wonder how Amazon will react this so quickly. It comes down to two things, our incredible people and a lot of engineering and computer science behind the scenes. We are talking robots, machine learning, sensor technology. Students can experience all this and more on a free Amazon Future Engineer Tour. They'll see firsthand how we use technology to pick, pack, and ship products. And they'll meet the amazing tech professionals who make the magic happen. Sign up today and let students see where a career in tech can take them. So... To understand some of the research and the work and the customer feedback that was used to create these tours and why they're designed the way they are, I need to kind of take you a bit on the evolution. And so you can sort of see how along the way this came to reality. So let me sort of take you along. It actually started as two completely separate programs. Amazon has a program called Amazon Future Engineer. And its goal, it's a philanthropic program with a goal of providing equitable access to computer science education to underserved and underrepresented youth. Um, it's currently fully operational in the US, India, UK, Germany, and Canada. And the team. I think you muted yourself, Susan, sorry. That was really neat. I have no idea how I managed to unmute myself without touching the screen, magic powers. Um, so the fulfillment centers where we literally store the things that people receive when they order from Amazon, where things are packaged into boxes, they actually, at some of them have public tours where, you know, scout troops or classes or just members of the public could come and there were tour guides who would let you look around. So we had tours and we had this Amazon Future Engineer program. When that pandemic hit, everything had to go online. The tours had to be made online because obviously public uh, safety, health measures, social distancing, all those things meant the tours had to train their tour guides to use cameras and video equipment to do the tours online. And all the program partners we worked with doing computer science workshops were suddenly doing everything online as well. And when we were learning from our teachers during this pandemic, one of the things we heard is they were really missed the ability to take field trips. And they, another feedback we always got was we want relevant content that connects the work they're using in the classroom to what's happening in the real world. Um, because as teachers, we may not be able to provide that experience. And we also need like fresh content that works online. The teachers are getting a little desperate for good online content. So we did a little digging into some research um, to try and ask ourselves, if we made these tours available to teachers, is, is there something there? And so we were researching on the barriers to career education. And we said, well, we know that we learned that teachers don't have the time to build the relationships with employers to learn about field trips. And we thought, well, these tours are already there. So no relationship building required. Schools don't always have a career technical education advisor to help coordinate these types of activities. This would be something a teacher could just do directly. And they're expensive, which limits which schools, being able to organize buses, being able to organize lunch for the students or substitute teachers to allow field trips, it's another barrier. And if they were online, then we could basically do them for free. So we thought maybe there's something here. 
So we invited computer science teachers to try the tours as is, no modifications at all. And we listened to what they had to say. The first thing they said is if you are going to show us anything in the real world or any of these tours, you've got to connect it to our curriculum. Teachers are too busy to do things because it's cool or fun. It has to help the students with the requirements, the stuff that teachers are doing every day. So we tweaked the tour and aligned it to some of the computer science teaching standards, adding concepts and teachers that teachers needed to cover in their classes anyway. So it was going to help them with the things they had to teach. They also asked us for a teacher toolkit with things like reflection activities and so on, or pre-work that students could do. So we worked with some uh, focus groups and created a teacher toolkit for them. And then they really, and this is where we started to discover the career connection, they started asking to meet the employees who built the technology. This was one of the number one requests. So we added some videos featuring employees in different roles to help students learn about the jobs and their career paths. And again, we listened to the teacher, but we wanted to do our research to make sure we understood, is this one teacher's opinion or is there some research evidence to back this up? Um, and we knew from our own research for Amazon Future Engineer that we have a lack of racial, gender, ethnic diversity in STEM, that's still an issue. Uh, and we also actually did some research with Gallup. Uh, and part of that research, we determined that students who have computer science role models are 10 times more likely to pursue a computer science career than students who don't. So we're like, okay, this compelling evidence here that role models become important. We know children as young as five have developed stereotypes about jobs based on gender, ethnicity, and social background. And so all of this led us to go, we've got to be really careful about the role models we put on video in front of those students. So we were very selective when we picked the employees to try and find employees from underrepresented backgrounds that would promote that sort of diversity and battle those stereotypes. Another interesting piece of research we found as we are thinking about workshops to show computer science was that centering lessons on a phenomena, something students already are somewhat familiar with can make science more relevant and interesting. And what's neat is Amazon is sort of ubiquitous and a lot of people have hit place order on an Amazon website. And to show them what happens after that was something that students could relate to. And we were found it was really interesting how many teachers said, I actually found it really cool to see how it works. Cause they think a person's probably walking down a hallway, picking a thing off a shelf, jamming it into a box, taping it off and mailing it to them to discover that there's robots driving shelves around and bringing things to people and how we make sure our employees don't get hit by the robots you know, when they're moving around. That to them was kind of mind blowing. So again, connecting to real world, but something they could kind of relate to became very important. So based on all this research and teacher feedback, we developed a modified version of the Fulfillment Center tour uh, we could only run it in the three centers that had tour guides with video equipment in the U.S. And we made them available to teachers in Canada and the U.S. because it was in English. And the time zones, of course, were only when the fulfillment centers were operating in the U.S. So off they went and uh, it went really well. Uh, so France actually had a tour team as well. And here I was as a Canadian. We speak French and English in Canada. So there was very high demand for French tours in Canada. So the French team said, we love what's going on. We'll get our team to do it. So we added tours out of France. We translated the toolkit to French and operated them out of there. But, and we got up to about 250,000 students in, our, in one year who attended this tour. So it was quite successful, really high numbers in terms of students attending. But there was clearly still some improvements that need to be made. We were looking again, continuing to research teacher feedback. The biggest feedback was timing. You know, when you offer something out of the Fulfillment Center in France, if I have students in Alberta, Canada, that's a six, seven hour time difference. So the tours are offered in time, it just doesn't fit into a classroom day. Uh, the other problem was like the, the tour might start at 10 a.m., but the teacher's class might run from 9.40 to 10.20. So the time slots didn't work out well. So really it came down to lack of flexibility. And sure enough, if you look at research, lack, lack of flexibility is a barrier to providing career education. The other big feedback we got was that uh, they'd like to have it better for younger grades. 
because the needs of a student in grade two, when you talk about technology and careers are not the same stories and you would share and needs for students in grade 10. Um, sometimes we have problems with the video being pixelated. Our fulfillment centers are really designed and optimized for moving parcels, not doing video uh, outlying. So sometimes the internet connection, the fulfillment center was also a problem. And also we had so many students attending the tours at a time that it wasn't actually that interactive. Um, all they got was the tour leader go, hey, I got a question for you. How fast do you think the parcel was ever delivered? And people would type in answers and you go, well, that's a lot of great answers. And anyway, it wasn't super interactive. We're like, hmm. So uh, not ideal. So based on all this feedback, we said, we think we need, because it's not being that interactive anyway, it's mostly just responding to trivia. We aren't going to lose that much interactivity by making it pre-recorded on an interactive platform. So we made that shift. We chose Kahoot because it's adopted by almost one in two teachers in the North America. So we knew with a place, go where they go, right? Don't try to drag them somewhere new. Uh, we made sure there was lots of trivia and poll questions to keep it interactive. So it's not just here, watch a video. Okay, I'm done now. Like students do not have, I don't have the attention span to watch 30 minute video. We made sure we kept the interviews with the tech employees. We did tweak them a little bit based on research we looked up on what content was most impactful for helping students understand careers and futures of careers and career selection, things like different backgrounds of education levels. We offered it as a single 45 to 60 minute experience and we offered it as broken into two. So if a teacher had a small class time block, they could do it over two different days if that worked better for them. And we created two versions, one for primary and one for secondary. It didn't stop there. This would have been in uh, 2021. And as we were doing it, once this tour went live and we are at about 300,000 students have done that Kahoot tour at this time. But as we developed it and started working on other tours, we discovered simple little things. If you're ever thinking of creating something like this, tours work best if you show the actual technology, not videos or animations of what the technology would be doing. So a video or sorry, a drawing of a robot moving around is not as impactful as video of the robot itself actually doing the task. Uh, we absolutely guide all our tours. You have to start from the curriculum standards, which means more work because the standards can be varying from one country to another. So when we look at Germany or France, we often have to adapt the toolkit or some of the technology terminology to be more appropriate for different countries. So it makes it a little more difficult to localize in new countries. Another interesting finding was we discovered students actually wanted to see people closer to their age in the videos, in addition to the people behind the scenes, the career uh, employees. So when we made the tours for younger students, we provided sort of 10 to 12 year old students as hosts of the tour. That was something I didn't expect, but we got better feedback and engagement from students. When we have the interviews with employees to talk about their careers, we discovered it's really important that they're reinforcing what was learned in the video. So you have to make sure they're talking about the same terminology. So if you were talking about how machine learning is used to figure out the perfect size box for your parcel, and yes, it is. We actually, people don't get to choose the box. When stuff arrives in a bin, person packing the box is told, use the A6 box. It's all magically calculated. Then we bring in someone who says, hey, I'm a software developer engineer. I use things like machine learning to create these types of algorithms that make life easier. So the employees know exactly which box to use. And that also, you know, saves on the environment because we don't use boxes that are too big and that kind of thing. But we have to connect that to what they were learning. Otherwise, it seems forced. We try very much to showcase alternate career paths where we can. The number one request we get from teachers is, please don't make every career employee cookie cutter. I don't just wanna see, they graduated high school, they went and got a bachelor's degree, they got a job, right? We all know there's a lot of different paths to success. So we really went digging, not only for employees who had diverse backgrounds in terms of ethnicity and race and gender, or who were underrepresented in the field, we also sought out people who had taken a non-traditional path to get where they were. Now, it's tough. We only have about four videos in each tour, but said that allows us, though, to go digging hard to find the right stories that will have the most impact. Not surprisingly, 
videos that are short with engagement in between. So rather than one 20 minute video, you're better off with five, two minute videos and cool stuff in between. None of us have long attention spans. I know you're already wondering when is Susan gonna stop talking? Uh, and tours also work best when there's a narrative that connects it together. When we developed the fulfillment center tour, there was a very obvious story. You place an order, what happens next? Oh, the robot brings the little shelf to a person and they pull the things off the shelf. They put them in the box. It goes on a conveyor belt, dum dee dum dee dum It has its stamp on it. Then it gets on this other conveyor belt and then it gets shipped out to a truck. But there was a very logical story. When we did the partnership with NASA, NASA, you're like, wow, space, cool. Much harder to find the connecting thread. So that was a big learning we had from our NASA one. Through so all I this, we've gotten to a point now. Susan, you got one minute. So That's where I want to be. Perfect. Thank you, Paul. All right. Okay. Um, so when from there, we were able to get to the point that we can really start thinking about the scale. So we started creating multiple tours now. We did one with NASA called the Callisto Space Innovation Tour. We are now localizing the Robotic Fulfillment Center Tour for Germany and France with things like closed captions. We're developing a cloud computing data center tour. Uh, and we've rebranded it to career tours because we started off with that computer science focus. But we're now realizing the need to just become aware of more great careers. So we don't want to limit ourselves to computer science careers. So that's a shift we made from tech tours to career tours. And with that in mind, we're actually just wrapping up some research with Gallup to try and identify, starting with the US, what are the careers of the future um, based on income, supply, demand, resistance to automation that we'll be releasing in June. And that data is going to help us figure out which careers to feature in tours like this. So thanks, Susan. Um...